we'll pick up where we left off uh, the last time I had the pleasure of being here with you, and that's in Proverbs. And we're still dealing with family, friends, fidelity, with an emphasis on wisdom. We'll start back with uh, verse 26, and that's Proverbs 23, 26. It says, my son, give me your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. My son, give me your heart. My daughter, give me your heart. Really, all creation, give me your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. There was a time, uh, saints, where we used to get fussed at uh, because we were more concerned with the ways of God or of Yah. And we were more concerned about that because we were trying to, uh, a lot of times, uh, stay in the way, but not too close. We, we at different times, wanted to stray a little bit, just a little, because we, we often felt that the most high would understand, I'm, I'm but flesh and blood. There's a group called uh, Human League. Most of you probably never heard of them, but you heard the song, I'm Only Human. They made that song. And for those of you that want to act like you never heard that song, okay. But the refrain in that song is, I'm only human. It's got a nice beat to it. And... Uh, they sound like they us, but they're of European descent. But they got a nice sound. That's not to say Europeans don't have a nice sound. But a lot of times, saints, in our lives, when we fall short, we do. We just say, hey, I'm only human. You know, uh, Isaac Hayes, I know y'all remember him. Now, Isaac all, all the time, and I used, to, I, I used to love Isaac Hayes. I had just about everything uh, that he put out, and yes, I was listening to him on the way down here. But I noticed something about my boy. He, uh, and, I, and I still love his music, but I noticed that in a lot of his songs, it was never his fault. He had this one song that I used to really like called One Woman. I'm going somewhere with this. And again, I'm not, I, like I said, I, I, I like his music. But uh, as you get older, you know, you kind of sometimes start listening more to the lyrics and not get so caught up in the melody. And, more and more I, I listen, I said, man, this, this cat would get in trouble. But it was never his fault. Any of you remember this song, By the Time I Get to Phoenix? Well, that was a situation where, you know, this guy was from the hills of Tennessee, and he saw this girl, and they fell in love, and they got married. And of course, the guy worked all the time. One day he came home. Oh, I don't have to tell you what he found. Oh, it hurt him so bad. What I'm saying to you, saints, is in a lot of his music, 
he too was saying, I'm only human. I'm only human. And a lot of times in our lives, we say that. We're only human. And we are. With a twist. We're only human, but we've been given instructions by our creator to follow. Because we're human. And that song, One Woman, it says, you know, uh, I fight my way through the early morning traffic. Now, he was leaving home. He was going to work. And he says, somebody else is heavy on my mind. I opened the door to our favorite coffee shop, and she's right on time. And man, I got all caught up in that song, and I was like, man, this is good, this is good, until I really started listening to the words. And I said, don't get me wrong, now, I ain't turning my back on my boy, he's still my boy. But what I'm saying is, a lot of that type of music really sold well. And, you know, so I can't, I can't, I don't, get with a lot of today's music, but uh, I can't, I can't knock them because when I pull out my collection and I start fumbling through a lot of my music that I was listening to, they're saying I'm only human today and we were saying I'm only human then. And the long gist of the song, Isaac was saying that one woman's making my home. And here's the kicker. The next line is, but the other woman making me do wrong. And then, you know, you know your mind shoot back to the garden when the Most High is talking to, uh, you know, everybody shifted the blame. You all know the story. But again, I know where Isaac got that line from. Because when the Most High talked to Adam, Adam said, hey, the woman you gave me. Am I, am I right? You know, and, and, and really, you know, for those of you that know a little bit about his style, a lot of his style had a churchy kind of, you know, arrangement which is why I don't know why I like them so much. <laughs> but through the corridors of time, saints, we, we still say I'm only human. And we that are believers, we're a little bit more than, than just that. Now, Again, I'm standing here before you, and I'm doing the best I can. I've told you, I'm a work in progress, you know, and, uh, but I can't keep saying I'm only human, because why? I've been given the instructions as to how to live. Now. Am I going to spend the balance of my days just trying to memorize it to make people think that because I memorize it, I must be living it? That's a mistake, particularly in this country, because a lot of us attribute living it because somebody can recite it. But I've shared with you ad nauseum, you know, a parrot can repeat what it heard, but it has no comprehension of what it's saying. Now we got an electronic parrot. Uh, what's the little box? Uh, when you want, you know, you just tell it what to play and it'll play music. Alexa, and then it's got a Cortana, Cart Cartina, you know. <laughs> 
Oh, see, saints, we've got to get, not only get the instructions in our heads to where we can recite them, but get them in our very being so that we can walk them out because that's the only way we're going to have success. That's, well, I, 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 I hesitate to say the only way, but that's the best way. That's the best way we're going to have success in life. Is we've got we've to walk it out. And then when you're walking it out and you stumble, I'm only human. That's okay. So you just get up again, you dust yourself off, and you, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, Father, I'm coming. And he's not going to walk so fast that we can't keep up. I mean, there's a lot in that verse. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. Watch me. Watch me as I demonstrate who I am in another human being's life. We're at a time now where everybody's looking for uh, some kind of mentor. Uh, you can go on YouTube, uh, get the mindset of a millionaire, uh, billionaire habits. You know, they want you to observe their habits. But I want to share with you a lot of the stuff, and, and some of it is very good information, but what you have to keep in mind, most of those, and they call them channels, most of those channels are put together for you to have to probably switch over to what's called their Patreon channel. Patreon channel is where you send money. You have more direct access. And again, I'm not knocking because, listen, you're going to have to get a skill set from somewhere. Not, oh, again, I shouldn't have said that. It's not you. We got to get a skill set from somewhere. The $30 an hour jobs just for turning a screw, they gone. And they're not coming back. I said to you some time ago, I said, hey, whether you're retired or not, check your paperwork. I'm going to tell you again, check your paperwork. Hopefully by the end of this month. I'm not talking fear. I just want to inform the people of the Most High. That's all. When you spend your money, please get some value for it. I know y'all know the price of gas. I saw somebody charging for 87 octane, 399. 399. And God love you if you got one of them fancy foreign cars that take premium. Ouch. Uh, Greg not here today, is he? Oh. Well, I'm picking up two accounts in Stony Creek. And I was going to call him and ask him how to get there because I got to meet with the people Wednesday. <laughs> but I'm picking up two uh, accounts because, yo, I lost the movie theater. 
somebody underbid me. I couldn't do it for free, though. <laughs> Saints, things are happening fast. Things are happening fast, and uh, we got to keep up. You know, I know, I, I know most of us have been kind of trained that don't pay any attention to the things of the world. No, you got to know a little something. Because, see, people take you for everything you got. They, and some of them don't mean to, but they're going to do it, and things are going to get tight. And again, this is merely to inform so that you wouldn't say, well, I didn't know. Nobody told me. I'm telling you now. Again, and I'll tell you again and again until finally somebody say, you know, I think he might be on to something. And it's not that I'm on to something. It's that the Most High is telling his own children, hey, y'all, come on now. I can't recall the passage, but there's a passage in the scriptures where the one that made us all say, hey, the ones that's kind of dibbling and dabbling a little bit in my instructions, they are faring better than those that's got their head buried in the book 24-7. They can memorize it. Basically, he said, the children of darkness is faring better than the children of light. The Creator said that. Which camp are we in? And I'm not fussy. But I'm quite, quite concerned. But, I, but again, listen, caution, careful, does not mean fear. Don't let somebody change the narrative. Because a person's cautious, because they're careful, they are not fearful. Don't let, even if it's another believer, change the narrative and say they're talking fear. Every time we allow somebody to change the narrative about any subject, we suffer loss. Every time, just about. Keep your eye on what it is you're actually discussing. If you're talking apples, stick with apples. Don't start talking about pears, and don't let somebody call it a pumpkin. It's an apple. We've got more decisions to make. And again, please, please, Use wisdom in your decision making. Use wisdom in your choosing. To do or not to do. But please, use wisdom. Yes, pay some attention to your feelings. Oh, again. Let us pay attention to our feelings. But please, let us learn to not let our feelings be the determining factor. Our feelings are fleeting. Now, if we've been blessed to where we can get to a state where we're vigilant and we're of sound mind, that's the best time to make a decision. Now, I know sometimes life don't come at you like that. Sometimes you don't get much time to make a decision. But I did share one little nugget with you. When somebody's trying to get you to do something they want you to do and they gotta have an answer, you all remember what the best answer to give them? No! That's the best answer. Don't let somebody 
pressure you, manipulate you. And like I said before, people would even use the Most High himself to get you to do what it is they want you to do. Wake up, saints. We have suffered great loss by allowing the narrative to be changed, by allowing ourselves to be manipulated, That should stop. We know better than that. Even, in, and I hate to say this, even in the natural we know better than that. And I know that's a bad word around here. Twenty-seven. Reggie, I'm gonna stay on time today. And thank you all for coming. It says here in this translation, it says, a prostitute is a deep ditch and a forbidden woman like a narrow well. She lies in wait to snatch her prey and adds to the number of faithless men. I'm going to move on. Who has misery? Who has regret? Listen to this. Who fights and complains all the time? Who gets bruised for no good reason? Who has bloodshot eyes? And see, then they hit you with the clincher. Because I'm a wine drinker. And listen to what the next verse says. Those who spend their time over wine. <laughs> W-I-N-E. And then I W-H-I-N-E too. Because I told you I was a crybaby. And I said, well, wait a minute now. Why you had to put that in there? Why did he translate that that way? Mm, let me read it again. Who has misery? Who has regret? Who fights and complains all the time? Who gets bruised for no good reason? And, and I'll, I'll be honest, the first three questions, I was like, the saints, the saints, the saints. That's what I kept saying. And yeah, I was thinking about some of y'all. Or I should say, some of us. But then when he hit me between that, he said, who has bloodshot eyes? Well, I don't think I ever had bloodshot eyes, because I try not to drink in, ex in excess, especially when you got to get up early. Those who spend their time over wine, those always trying out mixed drinks. I was like, wow. Now, if that's not today's vernacular, Mm, mm, mm. It says here, don't gaze at the red wine. Now, see, some doctors say one glass is good for you. Not one bottle, one glass. You know, and over in France, the water's so bad, the kids even drinking a little wine. Now, I'm not, you know, hey, I'm not, I'm not trying to make a case. I'm not trying to make a case. I mean, I ain't going to win it with him, no way. But you know, I, I, now you, you, I, and I know you all know this, uh, alcohol consumption, drug use, all of that stuff's at an all-time high for these last couple of years. And you know, things are starting to lift and, you know, uh, a lot of us was forced to have to live together. 
For some people, it was forced. A lot of couples rediscovered each other. I hope it was pleasant. But all of us have had time to really reassess who we are for real, not what we do. Who are we at the core? You know, and if, you know, today you ask somebody, you know, well, who are you? Well, most of them will tell you what their profession is. Or if they're out of the market, I'm retired. Well, that's still not telling me who you are. I, 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 I understand you're retired, but who are you, the person? Who are you? And if you search the scriptures, how was somebody always characterized? They were characterized by who their parents were. Not what they did. What not, not what line of work they were in. And it's still the same even today. We're one of a few things. Besides, sometimes we go to Knucklehead City. But you're either somebody's father or somebody's mother. Sometimes, if you've been blessed, you're somebody's grandparent. You're somebody's uncle, you're somebody's aunt. That's who you really, you're in one of those roles all the time. Or somebody's son, somebody's daughter. Not, I'm an accountant, I'm a whatever. I'm, and, Again, that's not who you are, that's what you do. I'm a lawyer. Uh, Carrie likes to say I'm a liar, I mean a lawyer. <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, I'm sure if most of us play over in our head, that's how we answered somebody. By what we do. But you didn't answer the question, who are you? Again, I mean, and Messiah, he nailed it. He said, who do men say I am? And they talked about who his daddy was. Why aren't we doing the same thing? Maybe that was by design to get us away from answering who are we. Now, when another believer asks you that, oh, no. I'm minister so-and-so, so-and-so. Oh, boy, I got so tired. I was like, I'm going to take my answering machine and just throw it out the window. You ain't telling me who you are. And even after you tell me, I still don't know you. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, boy, like that's supposed to move me somewhere so and I had a, um, I told you all about that neighbor <laughs> that I had that uh, Edgar and I had to dig up her mailbox twice. Because she don't mean to be a bother. And I said, Father, you know, this ain't fair. I said, now, look, if this persists, I'm going to have to move. And I said, I got too much stuff. I'm getting too old. I can't move again. Past few days ago, they had some trouble getting into the uh, hood of their car. They couldn't get the latch up. <laughs> and I was coming home and th 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 think about it. I got to drive right past their house so they know when I'm coming home and when I'm going out. And oh, when I get home, I just want to just relax. That's, that's all. That's all I want to do. I don't want to bother nobody. But I don't want nobody bothering me. Long and short of it, um, 
I went over there and I tried to get the thing open. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, mechanically inclined. Then I had to help him move some furniture. And I said, you know, Father, all I said was, I'm just going to try to be the best whatever I am left to be. And, I, and, it, and it's clear as day, what about neighbor? Yeah, but you weigh me out with her. I mean, I'm already dealing with a whole lot of feelings trying to get things redirected correctly. Why, why, why am I, why, are you mad at me about something? Can't we talk about this? And uh, finally they, she got a hold of a, a guy that's got a shop not that far and he came and they, he brought some help with him and they were able to get the thing going and everything and I was just so glad because I really I, I, I do I want to be a good neighbor believe it or not y'all I even want to be a good church member Amen. that's a lot of work but I, I, I you know I, I just purpose whatever I'm no longer, well, I'm still the most high son, but my dad is gone. So I'm no longer in the role of a son in that vernacular. And there's a void there. I mean, and we all kind of, you know, when you start taking inventory of your life, well, what's left? Well, you're still somebody's brother. You're still somebody's cousin. You're still an uncle. You know, you, so, so let's, let's, let's some, put some work in that. You know, be a good neighbor. And so she called and calling myself. And I'm like, um, you know, my cell phone is for business. And I was like, I'm not giving her my home number. Because I, I really don't like for people to have that kind of access to me because It's just, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging. But anyway, they would call and the conversation was going on and on and on. And I just want to thank you. And I was like, wow, I didn't do anything with that. But, you know, help, you know I'm glad the guy was able to fix. And then she said, because she's a churchgoer. One of them ones, you remember uh, Sanford and Son, um, with the ladies, yeah, Esther and her group. That's what she reminded me of, one of them tambourine, peel box hat wearing ones like that. Like some of you. Uh, she says, well, I just, I just, listen. The Lord showed me you're my angel. I was like, oh, Lord, we really ain't gonna make it now. I said, now, Father, now, you get, now, come on now, with all of what I'm dealing with. But believe it or not, I kept my mouth shut, and I just listened. And as she began to explain some of what was going on, I felt about this big. I ended up giving her my home number. <laughs> oh, man. Saints, I, 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 I'm serious. The people are the most high. We're going to have to help each other. We're going to have to help each other. Well, Edgar gonna help too. <laughs> um, yeah, we're 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 gonna have to. Uh, again, I'm not 
talk in fear. Uh, we really gonna have to look out for one another, for real. And um, a lot of that plastic stuff, it's gonna come to the surface and all I say is just kick it to the curb and just deal with, with what's left. See, after the plastic stuff's gone, now you're dealing with a real person. And then maybe we can get some things done. Mm, mm, mm. Don't gaze at the red wine as it gives color to the cup. And then he really hit me. He said, it may glide down smoothly now. But in the end, it bites like a serpent. Yes, it strikes like a poisonous snake. Your eyes will see peculiar things. And you know, now, when that, when that thing happened, that word peculiar. See, now, a lot of church folk, when they hear the word peculiar, again, a lot of us put words together that don't belong together. Peculiar means a little odd, not bizarre. Peculiar means a little different, not flaky. See, some of us think the more far out we are, the more spiritual we are. No, you're just more far out. Stop being like that. You are repelling people. You're not drawing people. What if we found out we're the reason why these seats are empty? Has that thought ever crossed anybody's mind? How many people am I repelling by the way I carry myself? Do we ever ask ourselves stuff like that? Or are we so, <laughs> my, my. I can pray down heaven. Yeah, right. You can pray down something. Mm. Mm. Your eyes will see peculiar things. I've heard a lot of <laughs> I've heard a lot of things said in here, and I said, "Well, I wonder what they had for dinner <laughs> or lunch." Or did they have a liquid lunch? I've also heard things where the congregation, where the congregation was told to do something, and that was strictly for that person, for what was going on in their life. See, everything that comes to you ain't for us. Some of the stuff's for that individual. And folks, we need the wisdom as to know the difference. And we all miss it. We all miss it from time to time. But some miss it more than others and are consistently missing it. Let's grow up. Your eyes will see peculiar things. Your mind will utter nonsense. Now, all of us have had some crazy thoughts come to our mind. Well, most of us, because maybe some of us are so locked in. And I'll just say, you're a liar.
if you really believe that about yourself. Your eyes will see peculiar things. Your mind will utter nonsense. You will feel as if lying on the waves of the sea or sprawled on top of the mast. And I put in parentheses over here, at this point, one must be intoxicated. <laughs> I put that over in the, in the side. Because when you are intoxicated, you do say some silly things. We do see some crazy things. And Lord help you, if you ever got a hold of a saint that's had too much to drink, because then they want to preach. Have any of you sat through a drunken sermon? Probably not. I have. Until the club owners escort them out. Mm. You will feel as if lying on the waves of the sea or sprawl on the top of the mast. They hit me, but I didn't feel it. They beat me up, and I didn't even know it. And you know, if you get three sheets to the wind, and I, that's not a bad phrase. But when you get that drunk, a lot of people, some people get mean and they want to fight when they drunk like that. And they don't even remember. A lot of times they don't even remember. My cousin used to tell me that he worked with a guy and that was his idea of a great weekend. Get paid, go out, get drunk. Get in a fight, probably. And he asked, he said, and you call that a good time? I guess for some people that is. One of my buildings, it was on a Friday. The guy was like, man, it's Friday. I know what I'm going to be doing all weekend. And he was, he was going to get him a bottle or a couple of bottles, and that's what he was going to do the whole weekend. But Barry, you should have started witnessing to him. No. Once again, I shut my mouth. And I just was like, wow. Come in Monday. I see him Monday evening. How was your weekend? It was great, man. I was like, wow. But he made it back. See, a lot of people are functional in doing that. And that's real dangerous when you can, and it doesn't have to be, it could be drugs too now. I mean, even some medications, what they tell you, don't operate heavy equipment. But see, our, our, our systems can almost adapt to anything. And some people will say, well, because I can handle that, I don't have a problem. Yeah, you still have a problem. They hit me, but I didn't feel it. They beat me up, and I didn't even know it. And then it said, when, I, when, will, I, when will I wake up? And then it ended with, I'll go get another drink. That's why I like this translation. <laughs> because it makes it pretty plain. It's hard to misinterpret that. We need his wisdom more and more, and we need it, and I'm not saying this to sound, certainly not to sound religious, and I'm not saying this because I'm in church. I'm telling you, grab a hold of his wisdom and hold on and apply it in every facet of your life. Every facet of our lives, we gotta do this. I mean, now, 
I'm not saying, should I wear a blue shirt or a red shirt? No, you don't have to spend 30 minutes praying about that. You already know you look much better in a blue shirt than a red shirt. So you don't need to pray about that. But I'm talking about a, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of everyday situations. Like for myself, should you have that extra glass of wine? Are you gonna throw out all of what you got in your cabin? No. <laughs> if you keep after me, I ain't gonna have no choice. Because I'd rather throw the wine out than me get put out. <laughs> but in every, every situation, uh, you might have had words with somebody on the job. And you know you hit them with a couple of zingers. And you might know, uh, I should apologize. Oh, but that show felt good. And they left me alone the whole day. I got some work done. But what does his wisdom say about that? In fact, when we look it up, sometimes even if you weren't the one that did the wrong, apologize anyway. And leave the word if out. And anybody that repents to you, if I offended you, you know that that ain't even real repent. Leave that word if out. More and more and more and more, we're going to need his wisdom. More and more and more. I, I mean, and like I said, when you spend your money, and gas almost $4 a gallon. And some of the experts saying it's going to get higher than that. And, and, and we got it bad. But can you imagine what those people in California are paying? Can you see? We got to become better stewards. This thing about, oh, uh, oh, I forgot this. Let me run to the store. No, wait till tomorrow. Learn how to make a big circle. So you ain't got to in and out, in and out, in and out. I'm, I'm serious. Price of everything going up. I, I lost my biggest account. Why? Because they didn't want to pay more. And I was highly insulted. Because I was worth the difference. So I thought. But obviously them boys in Pennsylvania said, <laughs> No, we're going another route. And, but the thing, I, I asked the guy in charge of operations, I said, well, look, man, I mean, when they said that to you, did you ask them, don't you pay for the gas? When you go to the grocery store, you don't go and tell the cashier, I ain't paying for this. this you pay it. You pay it or you leave it in the store. We got a cost of living adjustment, but that, that don't even register. Look at your social security checks, folks. It's in there, but try finding it. We have got to be smarter. We've got to be. Listen, okay, we ain't going to cry no more about, yes, a lot of us been done wrong. A lot of us been cheated out of some money. A lot of people have borrowed money from us. Could have paid us back, didn't pay us back. Some of y'all forgave them. Did y'all notice that I said that? Some of y'all forgave them. 
and that's wonderful. I'm sure pastor just smiling. But some of y'all forgave him. I would imagine he's just shaking his head. Let me say this about that financial matter. It's good. If, if you forgave him, that's wonderful. Seriously. But if you haven't resolved the matter and they can pay, get your money back. Now, I didn't say get in a fight, but things are going to get that tight that you're going to need your money. Let me say it again. Things are going to get so tight, you're going to need it. If it's yours and they said they were going to borrow it, you have every expectation to get your money back. And it doesn't mean you don't love the Lord any less. And don't let somebody use that on you again. Even in repentance, if you can make restitution, that's a very vital part that's left out in a lot of repenting. You ain't but so sorry. If, you don't, if, if, it, if it was of a financial matter, I can tell you if I owe you $50 and I ain't going to pay you your money back, and I say, Donnie, I'm sorry. How sorry do he, I mean, he know I'm sorry in that way, but how sorry does he really feel? How, how would he, do I really, did Barry really think I, I bought that? He'd go home to Sheila and say, wait. Can you believe that? He, he tells me he's sorry. I know given a week he can make $50. Why hasn't he given me my money back? Because it's cheaper for me to just do one of those plastic repentance jobs. I'll get up in front of the congregation if it'll save me $50. I'll borrow $50 from Donnie. And I just haven't been led to pay him back. I'm so sorry, Donnie. Those kind of repentances have taken place in here. That's plastic. That stuff should be from your heart for real. In fact, I don't have to get in front of the congregation and say, I need to go to Donnie and get that thing straight, and give him his $50 back. Now, I just use money for an example. It could have been, uh, he may have told me something in confidence, and I couldn't keep my fat mouth shut. And I just told one person, and then that one person told one person, and then they changed it up to suit them. See, we got to stop that kind of stuff, saints. We are not going to go forward still doing that same old stuff. We, we got to stop that. And stop being so thin-skinned. And since when did we become snowflakes? I mean, can't, can't handle no pressure. Fold like a deck of cards. I mean, it can talk more junk than enough. Some of us have a very sharp tongue. And then when you get it back, here come the crocodile tears, like you so hurt. Some of us have a lot of venom in us. And yet we think we so deep. Deep in venom. Let's stop that. We will not go forward continuing to be plastic people. We won't. And again, 
I'm not fussing. I'm telling you the honest to goodness truth. We gonna need each other before this year is out. Before this summer's over. So we really, and, and, and let me say this. Even if you don't particularly care for somebody, and guess what, saints? That's real. Look at the apostles. They didn't all get along. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that gives us license to get, you know, invite one another out in the parking lot and duke it out. I'm not saying like that. But there's, there are certain traits that sometimes we display and we're not even aware of it, and it affects different people. Here's something else. The way your brain process things can sometimes create friction between people. <laughs> I, you know, I know we just supposed to love everybody. But see, that's how that plastic stuff got instituted. Because you really don't like the person, but, oh, praise the Lord, how are you? You know, let's stop doing that. Let's stop doing that. You know, if you don't like me, my feelings might be hurt, but I'll get over it. And who knows, something may happen and we may have to work on a project together. And then you might find out I'm not the little snot you think I am. You know, or I'm not the arrogant Whatever, whatever you think I am, you know, and vice versa. But see, it's going to take working, really working together for us to find that out about each other. Because I've said it before, a lot of us, we are more acquaintances than we are family. Now, I know that don't go over well in here, because we love the word family. But if we're going to move forward, one minute. If we're going to move forward, folks, we've got to take a chance on being real with one another. Now, I'm going to sit down because he got one minute showing. But let me caution you with this, please, don't come on too strong. This is for all of us. In trying to really know one another, just a little bit at a time. Don't, don't inundate somebody, please. And respect their personal space, okay? And, 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 and the process may go a little smoother because some of us tend to come on a little too, a little too thick. And then make sure whatever it is that you share about yourself is true. Don't try to manufacture something about yourself, just, this is me, warts and all, about the warts that are appropriate. Because some stuff we don't need to know, okay? As a, as a body of believers, some stuff we don't need to know about you or me, okay? Because some of us share a little too much. God bless you. He got overtime showing.